In 2015, adventure travel writer Richard Grant released his memoir, Dispatches from Pluto, Lost and Found in the Mississippi Delta, recounting his spontaneous decision to purchase a house in the Mississippi Delta and reside there for a year. The book presents a humorous tale of Grant and his girlfriend, Mariah, navigating their way through the unfamiliar environment and their dilapidated house. It serves as a coming-of-age narrative, illustrating Grant's transformation into domesticity and his exploration of profound themes such as racism, community, and poverty. Kirkus Reviews aptly describes the book as a blend of various elements, including fecklessness, curiosity, social psychology, social dysfunction, hope, and despair. Richard Grant identifies himself as an unconventional Englishman drawn to remote locations. For a considerable period, he and Mariah resided in a compact apartment in New York City, punctuated by their excursions to places like Sierra Madre for exploration. However, following a casual conversation during a picnic, where they pondered what it would be like to live in the poorest county in America's poorest state, they whimsically decide to purchase an old plantation house in Hulse County, Mississippi Delta, despite their lack of prior visitation. This impulsive decision sets them on a year-long journey to adapt to life in Pluto, a small settlement surrounded by cypress trees near the Yazoo River. The initial segments of the book portray Richard and Mariah grappling with the forces of nature. They must adjust to the region's climate, with its scorching heat, suffocating humidity, and unexpectedly chilly nights. Then, the memoir delves into the ongoing battles faced by Richard and Mariah as they strive to reclaim their house from nature's relentless forces. The book vividly describes their encounters with cottonmouth snakes, alligators, destructive armadillos, aggressive fire ants, gigantic mosquitoes, and the relentless growth of weeds and rapidly sprouting bamboo. As Richard and Mariah gradually settle into their sprawling house, they begin to immerse themselves in the local community and its activities. Grant shares anecdotes of their early morning deer hunting expeditions, engaging in golf with a charismatic politician during a local re-election campaign, attending a black church, paying their respects to Emmett Till at the grocery store where his tragic fate began, expressing shock at the deplorable conditions of the area's schools, exploring Mississippi State Prison Parchment Farm, and delighting in a lively party hosted by the legendary blues musician T-Model Ford. Throughout the narrative, Grant delves into the historical backdrop, contextual intricacies, and the complex realities of race and racism in the region. The Mississippi Delta, historically predominantly black, has endured the enduring scars of slavery, the Civil War, Reconstruction, Jim Crow laws, and the struggles of forced integration. De facto segregation has persisted, shaping the social fabric of the land. In order to engage with his white neighbors without being dismayed by their regressive viewpoints, Richard and Mariah adopt a strategy they were advised early on in their journey, compartmentalization. Essentially, they must set aside the often untenable political beliefs of those around them and instead focus on their positive qualities. Simultaneously, as Richard forges connections with the patrons of a local tavern frequented by economically disadvantaged African Americans, he gains insight into their daily lives. Despite the omnipresent racism that permeates public life in the Delta, he observes numerous close-knit, affectionate, and interdependent relationships between black and white families. As Richard and Mariah gradually transition from viewing Pluto as a temporary adventure to embracing it as their true home, they forge connections with the vibrant locals who populate the area. Within these pages, readers encounter notable individuals such as T-Model Ford, renowned cookbook author Martha Foose, and esteemed actor Morgan Freeman. Additionally, they meet a diverse cast of characters including catfish farmers, eccentric millionaires, and captivating storytellers who lend their voices to the region. In the final section of the memoir, Grant confronts the pressing issue of the Delta's future, which appears grim given the dire state of public education in Mississippi and the broader southern region. Without resorting to blame, Grant takes us on a revealing journey through failing schools, where students find themselves trapped in a cycle of poverty due to inadequate resources and support. Yet, amidst the challenges, Grant discovers a glimmer of hope, a model school that, through two years of concerted effort and despite mounting obstacles, managed to elevate its rating from an F to a C. The book concludes with Richard and Mariah deeply intertwined in their love for one another and their profound affection for the flawed, captivating, and contradictory place they now proudly call home. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.